Okay, good morning, everybody. Thursday morning, 9 a.m. Eastern Time. We got 30 minutes to go until the opening bell. We got markets in positive territory to kick things off. You're looking at right near record territory. You get the S&Ps right now up 8 points trading at 39.85 putting it on a daily we're going to see 4,000 in those S&Ps today it's going to be pretty close folks we're talking about opening at a record print right now and the S&Ps up 17 points at 39.85 tech stocks trading higher to the tune of 1.2 percent higher 13,243 in the Nasdaq 100 we got the Dow up 46 points right now 32,944 right near record territory as well within about 200 points of that price level in the Russell positive by about 11 points trading at 2234 this morning we got crude trading higher as well crude's up a dollar 21 this morning trading at 6039 a little volatility in both directions how about the sell-off yesterday in crude from 61 down to 59 talk about an acceleration you lose two dollars from about one in the afternoon till the closing bell at 230 and that's the closing on the futures market in crude this morning little volatility yet again and we're back above sixty dollars at sixty forty three we got to talk about bitcoin talk about some volatility recently bitcoin hanging tough around the sixty thousand price point fifty nine thousand seven eighty gold contract continuing the bid that started yesterday we had gold at sixteen seventy seven uh, that was basically overnight Tuesday into Wednesday. The acceleration in gold really begins at about the open yesterday at 9.30. We trade from 1687 to about 17.15. We've added $9 yet again to the price of gold this morning. We're trading at 17.24. We got silver up 16 cents at 24.69 and notes and bonds this morning. We're getting a little bit of higher price and lower yield. The 10-year right now is up 13 ticks at 131.11. The 30-year is up a full point and seven ticks at 155.26. That is on the heels of some weekly jobless claim data. We'll get into that in a moment. We got the VIX volatility index. How about a 17 handle? Is that right? I think it is a 17 handle, folks. We haven't seen that since uh, you got to go back over a year. Let's back it up. You're talking about a 17 handle. It was the week of February 17th. After that, we've been far above those levels. But this morning, as the market continues to push record highs across the board, we got a 1797 print for a moment. We're trading with the VIX at 1832 so far this morning. What else we got going on? Let's jump right into the jobless claims number. We got it at 830 this morning. Uh, so uh, a big number. Um, you have the number coming in at 719,000 before I add a little bit of analysis to get into the nuts and bolts of it. Initial jobless claims, 719,000 in the week ended March 27th. That's up 61,000 from the prior week. The Labor Department uh, data showed this morning. Economists were looking for about 675,000. The prior week's figure was revised down to 658,000, which is below the Great Recession's peak. Yeah, I mean, these numbers, folks, record-breaking in any other world besides the world we're living in with COVID. In terms of prior to coming into the COVID pandemic, we had never seen a number. I think the record prior to COVID was 692,000 jobs on an initial weekly claim basis. Uh, and we've been stuck above that level going over a year now, 719,000. Now, the only part I add to this is uh, this number is, is, is backwards looking to a degree, right? It's telling us initial jobless claims going backwards. Really, it's going to be all about, folks, the next two to three months as we get over this hump of COVID. We're still dealing with people who have two shots. I think you're probably at somewhere between 14 percent of the population um, in the United States has received two shots that they would be immunized. They're kind of uh, reached that efficacy of the two shots, whether it's Moderna or Pfizer. I think you got somewhere around 25, 26, 27% of the population that's received one shot at this point. So they're on their way. But boy, we got to get to 50, 60, 70. 80% maybe before we really eradicate this thing uh, in a dramatic fashion to really open back, back up. The market is really looking for the next two or three months, folks, once we get over that hump, right? Once everything opens back up, the numbers come down dramatically, the vaccinations come up dramatically. Uh, but nonetheless, not what you're looking for when you're looking for the economy to open back up. Continuing claims, continuing to decrease, but people are falling off the rolls. So that can be a little bit skewed as well. Continuing claims down at 37 nine million this morning uh what else we got going on i think we got a break coming up what's going on with my producers this morning uh we got the markets right now the s p we're trading up 16 points right now at 39.84 nasdaq's up 150 points we got the dow up 45 points the russell 
right now up 11 points trading at 22.33 we got crude up a buck 57 look at that acceleration continuing crude above where we were pre-market trading at 60.73 and we got that gold contract up nine dollars at 17.24 stay tuned folks we got some equities moving this morning we got some earnings from last night we got a lot to talk about on thursday coming into a long weekend markets close tomorrow for good friday we got non-farm payrolls to talk about tomorrow as well stay tuned folks Golden ratios give shape to everything in our world, represented in the Fibonacci sequence. These special numbers define the patterns that make up our universe. Not even markets can escape the omnipotence of these ratios. Larry Pesavento is a 45-year market veteran who has published nearly a dozen books on the powerful patterns we find in nature and their relationships with the ever-elusive markets. Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, will teach you to harness the power of these natural golden ratios in order to create successful trades. Fibonacci 24-7 is designed to teach the tools you need to identify and act on these undeniable and reoccurring patterns. Sign up for Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, and you will also receive free access to his trading webinar, Trading Strong Trending Markets. Try out Larry's newsletter risk-free. All of TFNN's newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee TFNN, educating investors. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Hey there, I'm Andy Arbertine with Tiger Precious Metals and Stones. Whether you're looking to buy and sell precious metals or trying to find the perfect diamond ring, I'm here to help. I have over 15 years of experience with diamonds and precious metals. You can call me directly at 727-329-8245 and I will personally answer any questions you have and help you find exactly what you're looking for. I will be your personal concierge in the metal and stone business. Give me a call today, 727-329-8245. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets right near record territory. We got about 12 minutes to go until the opening bell for Thursday trading. Again, we're close tomorrow, but interesting that we're going to get non farm payrolls tomorrow. So, tomorrow, uh, not a federal holiday, right? So, you got banks open. That's why you're going to get the economic data released tomorrow, not a federal holiday for Good Friday. The markets, though, will be closed. Interesting that you got to go into a long weekend. Uh, waiting for non-farm payrolls for the month of March. You want to go long, you want to go short through that weekend, you're not going to be able to trade tomorrow in the regular equity markets as they will be closed when we get a pretty important data point for the month of March, non-farm payrolls tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. Getting back into some of the uh, weekly jobless claims data real quick before we jump past this story. So the total of those receiving benefits also dropped sharply. Now, we went over that this is continuing claims, but not a great representation of the overall picture when you consider that you have 18.2 million people receiving benefits of some sort, most of those receiving pandemic-related benefits. Now, that number dropping by 1.5 million. I mean, we, won't, we wanna see this number get back down to like two or three million, folks. Uh, we wanna see it get back down to basically a continuing claims number once 
once the pandemic emergency assistant numbers disappear, which they're going to have to. You can't provide stimulus indefinitely. This is supposed to be a period to get us over the hump. It's supposed to be a period that basically allows those businesses that have had to shutter during the pandemic because of restrictions to keep that key in the door, turn it back on once we get over this hump and employment comes back at a much more rapid pace than if they had closed down and then those businesses are gone and just can't reopen and we have to restart it all over. Uh, continuing claims down to 18.2 million when you look at the total picture of pandemic related benefits. At the state level, you have Virginia, Kentucky, Georgia, California reporting the largest gains according to unadjusted data. And of course, this is all ahead of tomorrow's number. The market will be looking for about 675,000 is what they'll look for. Um, and we'll see if that comes to fruition tomorrow morning at 8.30 in the morning. All right, what else we got going on? Jump around to some of the stocks with earnings. How about CarMax? CarMax, they reported quarterly earnings of $1.27 a share. With revenue essentially in line with forecasts, they announced it would acquire the remaining part of Edmonds that it didn't already own in a cash and stock deal, valuing the auto information provider at $404 million. Quite a price tag for Edmonds. I've looked them up occasionally. I think they got the blue book information on their site. CarMax, though, lower this morning. KMX is their symbol. I was checking this out earlier. From about 133 to 127.25, putting this thing on a daily. Quite the run it's had, though, from 47 bucks, and that's not even the full picture. How about 37 bucks at the lows of COVID? You go from 100 to 37. We're sitting this morning at about 127, right near the highs we had uh, in the last few weeks for CarMax shares. What else we got going on? Let's see. Uh, let's get into Micron. This one's interesting. So you got Taiwan Semiconductor. Where do I have an article up here? Uh, technology. I'm pretty sure I do. Taiwan Semiconductor, they're going to be spending $100 billion. Maybe this is the article. There it is. Taiwan Semiconductor it spent $100 billion over three years to grow capacity. We're all familiar that we got a chip shortage going on. Taiwan Semiconductor, one of the biggest chip manufacturers, if not the biggest chip manufacturer out there. TSM is their symbol. The market loving this news from 118 to 121. You put up a three-year weekly. We've pulled back from the highs of 142, but we were trading at 34 bucks a couple years ago. We were trading at $40 and change uh, during the lows of COVID, and we were trading at $60 prior to the COVID pandemic. So you double that price point right now, putting it back on the 15-minute. So to get into the nuts and bolts, it's going to be interesting to see how they get this done. No matter how they get it done, the market likes it because we need chips. Uh, they had already planned a record capital expenditure of as much as $28 billion this year. But now they're up in that ante and expects to invest $100 billion over the next three years to increase capacity to support the manufacturing and R&D of advanced semiconductor technologies, they said in a statement responding to local media. Uh, their suppliers, of course, are up. You got Micron trading higher on this as well. Pull up Micron shares. There's your acceleration from Micron from 88 to about 92. Now, what's interesting, they got the other companies in there as well screen holdings you got tokyo electronic asml holdings asm international all higher here's the interesting part it's unclear how taiwan semiconductor with only 28 billion of cash and equivalents on its balance sheet at the end of december intends to finance that record outlay which underscores the enormous capital required to stay at the forefront of the industry relied on by everybody right now you get into it Taiwan Semi, they're going to be spending $100 billion over three years. Intel just came out and announced that they're going to spend $20 billion to build new, two new fabs in Arizona. And you got Samsung spending $116 billion over a decade to expand their business. Boy, that's a lot of money to compete, but Taiwan Semi really coming to it with a billion, a billion, $100 billion over just three years in that industry. Uh, probably a good thing. We're going to need some chips, folks. And, you know, you get into 5G, 5G, the whole deal is supposed to be everything is going to be linked to uh, the Internet of Things, right? Whether you got a coffee maker, your coffee maker is going to have a chip in it that'll process 5G. That way you wake up, it already knows. It talks to Alexa, your alarm fires off, your coffee maker knows that you're walking from your bedroom to your bathroom. It starts brewing your coffee in the, in the kitchen. Uh, everything's going to be tied to the Internet sooner or later, folks. Taiwan Semi, that's quite a number, though. $100 billion over three years. They don't have the cash just yet, but uh, yields, not that bad still. Um, in the yield market in terms of where we're coming to, in terms of what we're looking for, in terms of what they will be paying for that uh, capital. 
What else we got going on? Abbott, the Food and Drug Administration, improves their rapid antigen test for over-the-counter sales and use for home with people without current COVID systems. So the retail price still to be determined. The company told Reuters the test will be sold at retailers for less than 10 bucks. Um, it's important stuff, folks. We're going to still be getting over this thing for the next two, three, four months. Um, and hopefully that's it. I encourage you, folks, get out there, get the vaccine. It's safe. It's effective. I had my first shot uh, like a week, week and a half ago now. I got my second one coming up April 13th. And that's how we get over this hump, folks. It is. ExxonMobil. They released data in an SEC filing that points to the possibility of the company's first profit in five quarters. Not bad. We get some rising oil prices, right? So you get an analyst out there saying data points to a profit of $2.55 billion or $0.60 cents a share with Exxon benefiting from higher oil and gas prices. XOM is their symbol. A little bit of a pop, putting this thing on a three-year weekly for some context. Talk about some woes, right? We got negative oil prices back in April. You have Exxon down to 30. This morning, we're going to open above 56. Uh, checking out Chevron, CVX. Now, you had Warren Buffett stepping into Chevron in a big way. Chevron much closer to the pre-COVID levels than Exxon. We're trading about 104, and we're going to be up a bit on Chevron this morning to 105.50 at a time when we have crude continuing to accelerate higher, putting crude back on the 15-minute. Boy, volatility. I mean, that's quite a trading range for crude. You're talking about a dollar fifty just since six a.m. this morning, folks. You traded down a dollar fifty and you traded back up a dollar fifty. Interesting level, sixty-one dollars where we were. Whether it was the high Wednesday early, early at about three a.m. or the highs we had intraday Wednesday as well. All right, folks, stay tuned. We're going to be coming back in three minutes, right for that opening bell. We got the S and P's up seventeen. We got tech stocks higher. We'll take a look at some of them as well. We get some Apple news out there as well. Why not? Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. The printing presses are working twenty-four hours a day, seven days a week. The U.S. deficit has risen two hundred percent in one year, with no end in sight. The markets are looking for an additional stimulus bill to get us through this once-in-a-generation pandemic. There is no free lunch, folks. The more stimulus dollars put into the marketplace, the less your dollar is worth each and every day. This is the time to protect yourself with a portion of your portfolio in the metal market. The Gold Report comes out each Monday morning. I bisect and dissect the dollar, silver, gold, the XAU, and the HUI. The Gold Report is a long-term hedge against the dilution of your buying power. The U.S. has put more than $6 trillion into the marketplace in the last six months, with more expected in the next few months. The market did and does need the stimulus, but it will have long-term implications on our buying power. The Gold Report comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Go to TFNN.com and order the Gold Report now. Protect your buying power. Order the Gold Report now. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den trading room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com.
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the markets open and we got markets continuing to trade higher. We got all time high prints. S&P right now, you're talking about positive 21 points at 39.89. We got 11 points to go till 4,000. We'll see if we hit it today before the long weekend. Tech stocks higher as well. NASDAQ 100 up 1.2%, 13,249. The Dow's up by 68 points and the Russell up by 13. Checking in commodities, holding at that $60.75 price point in crude. And we'll check in on gold right now. Gold up about eight bucks at 17.24. Let's take a look at some of the FANG stocks out here this morning. Amazon shares jumping at the open. We're up about nine tenths percent, trading at 31.22. We'll check out Apple shares up 1.3%, trading at 123.78. I think I got an Apple story up there too. What do we got? We got two Amazon stories up there. Maybe we don't. Maybe I'm talking about Amazon. Let's just jump to Amazon to start it off. Uh, the trends in terms of where people are going, right? So Amazon out there, they're saying most U.S. employees will return to work in the fall. Seems to be fair and better than fair, folks. By the fall, we better be there because if we're not there in the fall in terms of getting over this thing, we got the, we got, we got, we have what we need, folks, is the best way to put it. We have the vaccine. The vaccines are effective. You even have news out there talking about uh, Pfizer, I believe it was 91% effective in a follow-up study, looking at people whether they go for six months now, they've been receiving the vaccine, the variants that are out there, strong, effective vaccines with a supply to go with it. Many states opening up across the board now. And nonetheless, by, if you're not there by the fall, we got problems, folks, in a big way. And those problems just might have to be with uh, anti-vaccination trends across the U.S. and the world. Hopefully that's not the case. As I mentioned, I encourage you to get that vaccine uh, if you can. It's safe. It's effective. That's how we get over the hump. And you can't fault these companies for saying by early fall, the company said in an internal memo, that, memo this week, most of its U.S. employees will return to the office in the U.S. as vaccines become broadly available in the next few months, kind of stating everything I just went over. We expect more people will start coming into the office through the summer with most back in the office by early fall. Workers in some European countries may return later owing to vaccine distribution setbacks in Europe that we've all heard there as well. Um, Amazon, the second uh, largest U.S. private sector employer behind only Walmart. So interesting to see how you see those things uh, taking shape. I don't know what employees in terms of most of they're talking about, whether they're going to be providing people the ability that have it to work in at home in some capacity, but they're gonna face some competition when you look at whether it's executives that they're trying to poach and what they're doing, because a lot of those big tech companies, they're saying that they're gonna provide some degree of work from home capability, right? Uh, Amazon, not in that business, it looks like, as they look to bring most of their employers back by the fall. Interesting to see how we're gonna get these divergences uh, when we come out of COVID with companies that are um, the management team believes and it might be right for them. It's going to differ company by company. But in Amazon, they believe they want employees back in the offices as opposed to whether you see some, you know, some of the big Silicon Valley uh, companies out there that are trying to do a different deal and allow some of those workers to work from home indefinitely. Uh, maybe one of the perks that allows them to go after some big talent out there as well. The other Amazon story out there. Startup Thrasio poaches CFO from ailing J.C. Penney. So this company, it's a brand startup. Uh, what they do is they basically buy the brands that are doing well on Amazon. So they joined the company. Bill Wofford, not familiar with him, but I guess he was uh, he was hired in 2019 to help turn around the unprofitable department store chain. Will serve in the same job at Thrasio. The company said Thursday. He's the latest executive to leave J.C. Penney since it filed for bankruptcy in May. And he is going to step in. Uh, what's his going to be a role? Chief financial officer. There we go. So they get J.C. Penney CFO, and he's going to be coming into the company that basically uh, – Walpole, Walpole, good old Walpole. Walpole, Massachusetts-based Thrasio is the best funded of a raft of startups looking to capitalize on e Amazon's e-commerce dominance by acquiring up-and-coming selling up-and-coming sellers on the company's third-party marketplace. So 
Amazon brand startup Thrasio. Interesting, nonetheless. Um, it's a big business, folks. You see Amazon, they copy all those items in, in general, right? Um, but you got companies out there basically just trying to buy up some of those brands. Thrasio and its peers buy out small merchants, sometimes mom and pop operations out of garages, plan to use their retail expertise to turn the acquisitions into global brands. Smart business idea. They also announced $100 million in new equity funding, bringing the total debt and equity raised by the company since December to 1.35 billion it's quite a price tag they better have some good managers when you're spending 1.35 billion uh for a company out there what else we got verizon making headlines so they beat out european carriers to run 5g at uk freeport you're gonna see these battles going on folks uh they won its first industrial 5g deal in europe there's gonna be 5g deals all over the place as 5g expands beating out local telecom companies and marking an early win in a push to sell the wireless systems to global businesses. Verizon, we'll check out Verizon. Full disclosure, I have some Verizon. My mom's got some Verizon. She worked there for a while in her career before she retired as a union employee. Uh, one of the only reasons she was able to retire when she did because of those union abilities to negotiate, uh, working there for her lifetime. Verizon trading at about 58, down about half a percent so far this morning. We got markets sitting right where we opened, though. The S&Ps just pushed 39.91. I mean, look at this chart, folks. We've seen pullbacks, right? You don't have to be a, a genius um, technician on your charts to draw an uptrend channel. And we are just in a straight uptrend channel across the board right now. S&P sitting at 39.90, even tech stocks, right? Let's zoom in on the NASDAQ 100. We're pushing up to 13,275. You back it up to the highs we had in the middle of March, 13,000. 287. We're within nine points right now in the NASDAQ 100. We might be there by the time I finish this sentence to challenge those highs in the middle of March. And then you get back to basically the end of February. You're talking about a level within 100 points. The high there, 13,353. So this will be a critical area when we come up with some of those tech stocks. You're going to be pushing to the area we had towards the end of February. We were also back up there in the beginning of March. And we were back up there in the middle of March. You're pushing right over that. And yeah, and as they're talking, Talking about S&P cash over 4,000. Break it out, folks. Thanks, Dan. Break it out. We got 4,000 in the S&Ps. Uh, I'm sure we probably got 33,000 as well in the Dow. And look at that Dow channel. Just hanging right up towards the upper boundary, boundary line of that channel line. It's pretty well defined, folks, and it hasn't done much. You had a little consolidation here from November to January. From there, we've accelerated again. And talk about pushing levels that are just uh, constant basis, highs across the board. All right, what else we got going on? How about Frontier? They're going public uh, this morning. And there's your S&P 500 topping 4,000. You'll see those headlines across the board today as we come into the long weekend. Really interesting, just from almost, uh, we're pushing all these levels coming into a long weekend with non-farm payrolls for the month of March where we're gonna just begin getting some lofty expectations, right? The number that they're looking for is 650,000, something like that. They're looking to add hundreds of thousands of jobs in the month of March. Uh, we're gonna do that over a long weekend. We're gonna have all the markets in positive territory right now to kick off the trading. Uh, we'll see how it happens, exactly. Frontier Airlines, so they're going public, raising 570 million in IPO starts trading today. I was watching their CEO on Bloomberg earlier, the discount budget carrier, the latest US carrier to go public, trading expected to begin next week. Interesting time that they go public, right? As we're basically on the heels of the pandemic. They sold 30 million shares, the price at 19 a piece, the low end of the target range. You're talking about a $4 billion valuation for Frontier on their IPO. Uh -huh would be a big year of travel to be expected when we break out of this. Stay tuned, folks. Give us a call. Still time. 877-927-6648. Love to hear from you. Stay tuned. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC. 
LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. Pavey White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. I got a chart here up of Fubo TV up 5.4% today. Quite the pullback this equity's had, right? You pull this thing up. I got a daily chart here. We were at a low of about eight bucks in the last year. We make it up to 62.29. We make it almost up to 60 bucks back in January, and then a cascade to lower crisis, uh, prices. Crisis, yeah, it's a crisis in this equity right now too. From that sell-off, you jump over to the Analyze tab. Uh, they're trading higher because they're going to be they're going to be uh, playing. So you're. You're at a $3.2 billion company right now, just for some reference in terms of the context of their market capitalization. Uh, the news with Fubo is that they are going to be streaming all Chicago Cubs non-nationally televised games. Now, interesting, sports is one of the best ways, folks, to bring people into some of these streaming platforms, in my opinion, because there's nothing like live sports, right? I mean, you saw that big deal the NFL did to the tune of about $100 billion recently. Uh, and that basically the NFL, they did it across the board in terms of they're talking about NBC, CBS, Amazon, Disney, they tie them all in. So instead of just, you know, going to one streaming platform, they are spreading the wealth to all the streaming platforms. And now all the all the traditional media companies have them, whether you got CBS, right, Viacom, they're going to have Paramount Plus, I believe it is. Uh, you're going to have NBC with Peacock. They'll have theirs. You have Disney Plus with their ESPN streaming platform. FUBU, that's a great deal. But be careful this equity. Because in the world of streaming, if you can't accelerate during COVID and kind of hold somewhat near the levels that you had, I'm not sure how you're going to be successful when you accelerate from $62 back in December to $55 back in January, and now you're sitting at 23.55. There's something going on with that equity that ain't so good, to put it lightly. Uh, Disney shares positive by about 1.5% with the market today, trading at 187. You got Netflix shares jumping over to them, positive by 1.8% today, 531.04. Uh, let's see, what else we got? Let's check in on Viacom, some of the stocks that really got hurt with the Archegos saga happening last Friday. Viacom up about half a percent this morning. You get Discovery shares down about two tenths percent. 
I talked about it before, folks. If you're looking in to get into either of these equities, you could definitely start with a partial position here. Don't start with a full position. You don't know how these things are going to reverberate. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of bright minds out in Wall Street, folks, hedge funds and the likes that have plenty of money that could plow money into these equities if they thought $45 was a bargain and a half. That's not happening just yet. OK, so you just got cut in half. Yeah, that was a liquidity crisis that sent it lower. Um, yeah. And as our man Peak saying in the den, should we use swaps? Well, that depends, Peak. You got five billion dollars you want to put in play for your entire equity. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Viacom down at 45 and Discovery. But both of these strong, strong equities in a big way. I got people in my household uh, that watch Discovery in a big way. They got quite a brand of channels that they encompass in there, whether it's TLC. I think you got Lifetime in there. You got the Food Network uh, along with others. And but you get cut in half and the market hasn't bounced back too quickly yet. So they're just a little dicey. But longer term, I see both of these being a player in a big way. Let's jump to some of the others while I'm here. CM CSA for Comcast trading at about 5438. That's NBC. That's Peacock. They've done pretty well, remarkably. And uh, I had one more on my head. Ah, AT&T. That's the other one you don't want to count out, folks. HBO. Now, this is a small portion of their business in terms of streaming, right? HBO Max. But I can tell you, they're talking about 120 to 150 million subscribers by, I think it was 2024 or 2025. That's a premium service. Uh, I, you know, I, I like this equity. It doesn't mean that it won't chop around forever, though. You put this thing on a monthly, right? And yeah, you've been stuck in a doldrums. I mean, you go back. We had quite a run in AT&T from 97. We had a high at 2000. You dropped down to a low of about 20. But yeah, I mean, you're talking about this thing's traded between 25 and 40 since basically the year 2000. So I'm not sure that you have the ability for the type of capital appreciation that you might want in that equity. But nonetheless, keep it on your radar because HBO Max is here to stay. Uh, this morning, though, pulling back about six tenths percent. Um, quite a pullback indeed. All right, what else we got going on? Checking around to some of the stocks that I like to take a look at as well. Let's take a look at some of the other tech stocks. Check out Salesforce this morning. We have some Salesforce for disclosure in my newsletter. I got some Salesforce for sure. Salesforce up about almost 2% right now. You got tech stocks charging higher at a time when we got the note and bond market a little bit higher as well. We get the 10 year right now up about 13 ticks. So that's going to correlate. I'm pulling it up right now. You're looking at a yield now in the 10 year of 1.69%. We're now under 1.7% in that 10 year. That's putting a boost on some of those tech stocks with the NASDAQ 100 up 1.5%. We talked about so CRM, you're up about 2.1%. Let's check out some of those other big tech stocks. We got Google up 1.8% this morning, Microsoft up 1.6%. Check out that we got Apple shares up 1.15%. This morning, Facebook shares up 2.1% at $300 for Facebook. I believe, uh, I was going to say, real close. So we hit a high this morning of 302.40, and you're about $2 away from the highs we made in August. You put this thing on a daily, talk about pushing the higher on end of that consolidation. We're right up there. Look to see how Facebook reacts to the highs we made all the way back in August of 304.67 as we push towards the all-time highs on Facebook shares. Let's check out Twitter shares as well. TWTR, we're up 3.4% on Twitter this morning, uh, still well off the highs we had of 80.75. All right, what else we got going on? Checking out some of the headlines out there. Sherwin-Williams, so they split three for one. That's effective today. SHW, they've been on quite a tear. Uh, you see the print here, right? That's the split going on. Hasn't yet calibrated on the Thinkorswim platform. We put this thing back on a three-year weekly. Thank goodness that's a split, uh, but remarkable. You trade from a price of two Excuse me, what's the low there? 325 at the COVID lows. And right now, you got to triple that number. So we're trading at about 750 for Sherwin Williams. Everybody doing everything they can to their household at home, including painting uh, Sherwin Williams. They get some great paint out there. They too, too. Uh, I use them for my properties. Uh, Sherwin Williams this morning, down about 10%, excuse me, tenth of a percent tenth of a percent uh, as they split three for one. Be aware of that one on your chart when you see those numbers uh, flickering. And we covered the Taiwan Semiconductor story in terms of $100 billion, and we'll wrap it up with NEO. NEO said it delivered 7,257 vehicles in March. 
373% increase over the same month last year. Here's what I'll caution you folks. Be careful of using percentages of small numbers, okay? If you produce 10 cars in your first year and you produce, you know, 20 cars in your second year, you've you've increased production by 100%. If you produce 10 your first year, you produce 50 your second year, well, geez, you're up almost 500%, right? They're still at a very, very low number. I mean, yeah, you can be proud of yourself producing 373% more cars than you did last year, but what is that? That means they probably made 2,000 cars last year during the month, and they made 7,200 this year during the month. Somewhere that about, you pull up NEO shares, NIO, I believe is their symbol, and you're up 5.2%. We'll put it back on a daily to see the action. We're trading at $41.6699, the high there. We got to check in on Tesla shares. TSLA up 3.4%, for Tesla shares this morning. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got the S&Ps. We're talking about 4,000 right now in the S&Ps. Right now in the cash, we're trading at 39.98. So just a hair under that number yet again. You get the NASDAQ up 1.6% today. That's the full NASDAQ. Trading 13,459. We get the Dow basically flat. The futures are negative by 20. The cash Dow up about 12. And we get the Russell up by 19. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish up the show. Give us a call, 877-927-6648. Right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Introducing Primal Edge. Today, it's even more important to take a supplement that complements your health. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to boost your immune system and help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Our early ancestors found all their nutritional requirements in the wild environment. But today, our food sources don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based, vitamins, minerals, fatty and amino acids in an easy to use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated humic and fulvic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air and water, without them life cannot exist. That's right, Ellen. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, just $89 exclusively at tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up 21 points right now. We got tech stocks surging higher on a yield to the 10-year down about, well, down below 1.7% uh, as we get a little bit of decrease in yields with weekly jobless claims coming in a little bit bigger than the market expected. Tomorrow, we get non-farm payrolls. I'm uh, going to pull up Delta. So Delta, they've been in the press a little bit having to do with their reaction, the heat they're taking, having to do with the new voting uh, law passed in Georgia. So you have the governor over there, he's in a little bit of battle, whether it's Delta, because they have that big base there, uh, coming out against this, Coca-Cola as well. Folks, the biggest problem with this law is that it is based on the premise that voter fraud has existed, et cetera, right? This all played into January 6th and what happened, folks, all right? We do more than just straight market talk here at TFNN, folks. It's about life, too, all right? When my dad started everything, he talks about white light all the time, right? If you listen to TFNN, you know it's more than just about simple buy low, sell high, market technician, et cetera, all right? I encourage you to take a look at this, folks, and see what it does. The real basis is, yes, you can strengthen everything going on, but it can't be based on the premise that voter fraud existed because it did not. And we see the harm that that can do. Um, to the man Marco Rubio out there, just very insincere um, comebacks. You know, let's talk about what's really happening. Instead of saying, Dio Delta, your business partners with the Communist Party in China, so you can't say anything to the state where you do business. I don't even understand how that plays into reality, folks, all right? If you wanna talk about not being able to say anything because you've talked about China, how about uh, the, the king of the Republican Party right now talking about that we love each other, China's Xi, all right? Or asking Xi to help him with reelection by boosting US farmers, all right? Or talking about how well Xi and China have done for coronavirus in the early days where everything was ignored, okay? You're gonna say we're getting political, folks, but this is real, and we see the problems that it created on January 6th, talking about election fraud persistently. That's what this law is based off, which does not exist, which is why you're seeing comebacks like this from a weak, weak man like Marco Rubio. All right, little Marco, we'll call him. So pay attention, folks, this is a big deal. All right, and it's unfortunate because that voter fraud did not exist, and we're seeing the same trends existing that got us in so much trouble towards the end of the election season. We just surpassed. I don't want to see that happening again. We'll end the program on that note, folks. S&P's right near 4,000. Thanks so much for.